Okay, so g'day and how you going? So we are back at the Japanese earthquakes. So they do a little bit of an update, but this one is pretty much stuck on the first. And any other updates relate to other earthquakes that occur in the region, because quite obviously this is a one-time event for well a few seconds. So ah. Uh, when you look at the interactive map, what you're looking at is the actual intensity. So you're not looking at the magnitude, which is what we all, well, that's what they use pretty much. So you go to the Geological Survey of the United States. So it's got magnitude, okay, expressed in numbers and fractions. Uh, so magnitude can be determined, data recorded in seismographs. So this is what we use in the seismographs. That's where they get the seven and a half. So on the actual seismograph. But what we're looking at here is intensity. So obviously you've got intensity. And this is pretty much up on the high part. So this is MMI. So you can click on it, modify Mercalli intensity, and if we go down here, so it's not magnitude. We have intensity. So whereas the magnitude of earthquake is one value described size, where there are many intensity values for each earthquake, and are distributed across geographical areas of an earthquake epicenter. The intensity is a measure and shake at each location. And this varies uh, from place to place, depending mostly on the distance from the fault rupture. However, there are many more aspects of the earthquake. So you have uh, the actual, okay, got the location, uh, such as the direction of earthquake rupture. So obviously this way, is north, east, south, west, uh, and the type of surface geology uh, beneath. So I'm, I still haven't looked up the surface geology. Okay, and they're expressed in Roman numerals. So that's why you got the Roman numerals down there. Okay, and it's derived from uh, human observation and reports of felt shaking and damage. So intensity is more based on what we observe and what we uh, feel. So it's feelings, my feelings, I'm so intense. Oh, a bit time. So that's why the magnitude, so we have a magnitude of 7.5, but the intensity MMI is 8.5. So this area had the most damage around here, as well as around here. So that's Susushi and Anamizu Machi. And as you can see, as you go out, the intensity decreases. So here we have 7.5. This should be 6.5 here. If I, yeah, yeah 6.5. So this one should be. Uh, 5.5 there, so that should be 6, 6.5, 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5, and it, it does get higher, but as you can see it gets past uh, 10, so basically that's what they're using here, and as you go out to the ocean, obviously this is just a caricature, there will be variations in the actual crust, which uh, would be um, make this not a circular or oval type feature uh, be more like on the continents and as you can see it's thicker we've got thicker crust on the continent so the energy is more dispersed uh, and also it penetrates a lot deeper than it does in the continental crust so that's why from so this uh uh, 5.5, uh, 4.5, okay, 
it doesn't and depending on the rock type so some areas it can go pretty pretty far other areas it doesn't and obviously the intensity 3.5 uh, because all of this area seems to be quite so if you look at uh, topographic okay aerial so it looks pretty mountainous so all this forested area is pretty much mountain peaks and we have uh pretty much tokyo here so that's pretty flat and it is delta region has been filled in so basically you know because this is all loose material the the, the actual um energy can penetrate it a lot easier obviously it goes around mount fuji skips all that so that's basically what that is so that's very interesting okay and then we've got the momentum uh tensor so if you're not too sure what the momentum tensor is gives information here so it's got depth of 15.5 kilometers uh, duration of 14 seconds and here's the energy so this is the magnitude 7.5 and we got the strike and dip which if you're not too sure there is a good pdf okay primer on focal mechanism solution for geologists so this is by vince cronin baylor university obviously it's in the united states somewhere never heard of it though okay so and this gives you some information so look up the actual user type in the search engine that and that would give you uh, this pdf so it gives you all the information that you want to know about that but basically it's different variations and here we have the compression factors that you can find in it anyway uh, that's that uh, estimate intensity map so uh, contours so you've got different variations so these are all the actual places where the readings are taken you say so uh, if you're not too sure what they are obviously it doesn't give you information on what you're looking at all right so you'd actually peak spectral acceleration and yeah maybe i should do another video about each of these analysis anyway okay peak ground acceleration distance from the rupture okay so as you can see as you get away the acceleration decreases yeah. Mate, oh, i'm not going to talk about that now so okay let's go back overview so there's really not that much information uh, we do have you know estimates of the fatalities so between a hundred and a thousand fatalities 44 percent uh, because japan i think the fatality is quite low this was afghanistan probably over a hundred thousand uh estimate economic losses so between 1 billion and 10 billion is the highest estimate and here we have okay show the cities um, so we've got the cities and Nanao so it doesn't and it shows the actual population so Tokyo 8, billion, 8 million people hmm in for Tokyo to be like 20 or 30 million people okay and we have the intensity so we get not felt to extreme 
and that's what these graphs are. So pretty much they did they wouldn't have felt it pretty much in this mountain region. So uh, yeah that is that. Oh and then we got the Forno fault. So this is interesting. It just shows you the direction of fault and the intensity. And this is the movement. So it is the epicenter and you see the most of the movement is to the north uh, to the northeast and southwest. And if you look at the actual movement, you've got three and a half meters in slip, so that's to the southwest. And the northeast only had about two about two meters. And you can see we've got different variations in the actual movement. So ten and this is pretty much uh, to the southwest we have a 75 kilometers distance. And to the northeast, we have a hundred kilometers. But in this region here, doesn't seem to be any movement. So it looks like this is um, various faults that have been. So this has moved, and this has probably moved um, relative to it. That's just a guess. Ah, uh, maybe you need to speak to an expert. Well, I'm no expert. So uh, that's about it for that. And here we have earthquakes. So these are occurred today, 11 o'clock. So magnitude 5.3. So obviously there's still movement. If uh, I keep that one, intensity. So basically, if we have, um, if you look at that, so. Look at the origin. So pretty much got the GPS coordinates as well. It's still ten kilometers there. Uh, number of phases, number of stations. So we've got eighty stations. Minimum distance. So it's uh, the minimum distance is that from Tokyo? Okay, time travel. Okay. It should be stations pretty much on top of that. So it gives you a lot of information. And here we have phases. Arrival time. It's here. Residual. Yeah, so. And these are, looks like the different stations. So this is how they get this distance. So obviously the distance is in degrees, not kilometers. Okay, magnitude uh, 5.5, error 0 0.068, that pretty much nothing. Okay, and same with that. And here we have some other ones, so this one is five, uh, 4.8. 4.9. So obviously the, the intensity after the actual earthquake has decreased. But it doesn't say if there's been any movement. Or this is this residual energy that's actually caused this movement. Obviously there's no other earthquakes around Japan. But if we go out, you can see there's another one between I think this is Yangtze and the Philippines plate, uh, 4.8 again, but at a depth of 72 kilometers. So that's caused by the actual subduction of that plate. Another one caused by subduction. It looks like, but this is Luzon, so it's on the actual opposite side of the Philippines main island. Here we have one close to Mindanao. And that's 5.2. And here we have another one, just north of Sulawesi in Indonesia. And I find in between Sulawesi and, what is that, Flores Island? No, there's Timor. Yeah, there might be Flores. We've got Java and Bali there. So I don't know all the islands in Indonesia. Then we've got north, one north of Papua New Guinea. So, 
If you look at population density, yeah. Ooh, look at that. So it shows you where the population of the actual place is. Maybe I'll kick this on. Because so it shows you this is this is an awful lay. It lays around here. Port Moresby is over this side. Uh, and uh, here we're, you know, here we're in jail. But if you look at the other ones, that in the ocean, that in the ocean. As you can see, most of the population sort of west is on this peninsula. So, we'll look at the population of uh, the Philippines. Anyway, let's have a look at some other earthquakes. Got none around New Zealand or the Pacific. Okay, let's go out. So we do have a few in the United States, so the Yaluton Islands, obviously in the ocean. Not quite a few in Alaska, but obviously they're small, 2.6. And you can see the population density is actually quite small. And there's virtually no one that lives up here. This is all pretty much just forested. And I think it's a Bering Island. Okay. So, and then oh, we have one in the Caribbean. Oh, we've got a few just south of Puerto Rico. Looks like we've got one on the mainland, 13.9 kilometers. We've got a few in the ocean. And as you can see, look at the population of Puerto Rico. It's quite heavily populated. And here's the actual uh, the actual fault line that we can see. Yeah. So is there anything else in South America? Looks like we've got a few in uh, Chile and Argentina. This big one. Yeah. Ooh, 150 kilometers. So this is caused by the subduction of the actual Pacific plate under the South American plate. And here we have one. 113 kilometers, 4.6. But as you can see, it's not really populated. We have a lot of population here, so this is in between Bolivia, Peru, Chile, and Argentina. And here we are in Argentina again. And this is Uruguay. And Paraguay is up here. Obviously, population is quite low because this is all bloody Brazil. Okay, so there's no earthquakes there. Any down south? No. Let's go out a bit more. Obviously, there'd be some in uh, here, but obviously, there's not that many seismographs. One in the middle of the actual Mid Atlantic Ridge, caused by the divergent plate boundary. How about Africa? Yeah, nothing. Europe, nothing. Turkey, surprising, nothing. And then we have, it looks like we have one in Kashmir. No, Afghanistan. So that's 4.3. The only one in uh, Asia. Look at the population. So you've got India. So most of this is in India. And then you've got Pakistan, Indus River, you've got Bangladesh, and uh, Nepal. Then you go over to China and to Tibet, sparsely populated Himalayas. Most of Iran's pretty sparsely populated. So. And then you got other countries as well. This is just interesting based on how populated the country is. So you can really see this is all China. Then you go to Russia, and there's pretty much no one in Siberia. Then you go to Europe, not as populated. The UK seems to be the highest populated area, highest density. And then you got Italy. So that is pretty much the earthquakes that occurred. Uh, and these has intensities. Okay, so So you got seven plus. So quite a lot of earthquakes are not showing on here. And we have a list here. So newest first, so Chile is the uh, the newest one that 
we had down here so do they probably always have earthquakes oh and here we have San Andreas fault so this is in California California just north of Mexico and yeah yeah, did there nothing really to worry about. So anyway, if you want to look at the actual information, uh, focal mechanism. So what was the focal mechanism of this one? If we look at that. So, looks like it's an oblique slip fault. Which, which uh, is what the San Andreas Fault is. No. But this uh, indicates the actual angle. So if you're interested, you can, can actually learn that. Look at this PDF first, and then uh, pretty much read some other stuff as well. So I hope this helps you with your earthquakes. Maybe I'll do this, you know, well, I've got time off probably every day. See what's going on around the world. Thank you. Goodbye.